NCB head defends bank fees, DPD collects capacity to deliver on projects, and firearm licensing authority under fire. This is the Parliament Report. Thanks for joining us. I'm Edmund Campbell. Group Managing Director of the National Commercial Bank, the NCB, Patrick Hilton, has dismissed claims that bank fees have been increased in an effort to recover income lost through the Jamaica Debt Exchange and the National Debt Exchange. The NCB head also refuted claims that bank charges have been increased to cover the bank's operating costs. In a presentation to the Economy and Production Committee of Parliament on the vexed issue of bank fees, Hilton said recent increases in fee income were mainly volume-driven and did not offset losses associated with the debt exchanges. Hilton told the committee members on March 12 that the bank fees and ratio of fee income to other income are competitive based on local, regional and international benchmarks. According to Hilton, fee income represented 20% of the group's gross revenues for financial year 2013, a slight increase over 19% in the previous year. He said fees increased by 13% or $891 million from financial year 2012 to financial year 2013. The NCB boss says his bank charged an average fee of $30 to use ABMs, while the cost to do a similar transaction in, in the bank amounted to little more than $200. Comparing NCB ABMs fees with ATM costs in the United States, Hilton said U.S. bank fees averaged U.S. $3 or Jamaica $324 per transaction and could be as high as U.S. $6 or $648 per transaction. On the question of fees for dormant accounts, which attracted a wave of criticisms from members of the public, Hilton said these accounts required an enhanced level of monitoring, given their susceptibility to fraud, and as such, additional resources are required to manage this portfolio. Executive Director of the Tourism Product Development Company, TPD Code Dennis Hickey, says his agency lacks the implementation capacity needed to ensure greater delivery on projects. At the same time, Hickey is blaming other government agencies and departments for the TPD cause failure to spend nearly 85% of the funds earmarked for development projects this financial year. Of the $616 million that had been budgeted for spending on projects this year by the TPD Co, only $94 million has been spent. Hickey said some of the projects, despite appearing on the list as projects being implemented by the TPD Co, reside in other agencies. Some $360 million is being spent on salaries for employees of the TPD Co, which successfully completed 12 projects as of January 2013, but has struggled to implement the 27 projects it earmarked for this fiscal year. However, committee member Audley Shaw blasted TPD Co for its record saying its performance level was disgraceful. The Firearm Licensing Authority, the FLA, found itself in the firing line of Parliament's Public Accounts Committee, PAC, on March 11. The FLA drew the ire of PAC members when it was revealed that the authority was paying a security company $17.5 million per annum for services rendered and could not produce a, a contract. The security firm has been providing services to the FLA over the last eight years. Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis brought the issue to the PAC after her department requested a copy of the contract from the Ministry of National Security on November 22, 2013, but it is yet to receive the document. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Major General Stuart Saunders, advised the PAC that security services were being provided at the FLA without a contract. He said the ministry had done extensive searches for a copy of the contract, but to date it has not been found. Committee member Julian Robbins asked the top brass of the Ministry of National Security and the FLA on what basis payments were being made to the security company and whether the issue of value for money was being taken into consideration. Another committee member, Everald Warmington, said he found the current arrangement strange, noting that he could not recall a situation like this over the 30 years he has been in Parliament. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica, the ECJ, is to be summoned to appear before Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, the PAAC, to answer questions about the multi-million dollar salaries paid to its commissioners. The ECJ had resisted appearing before the committee, which has been mandated by the Parliament 
to consider and report on two motions brought by Southwestern Catherine Member of Parliament Everall Warmington. Warmington wants the termination of payments being made from the public purse to political representatives on the ECJ. Nominated members of the ECJ earn just a little more than $8 million per year to sit on the commission. In addition to the ECJ resisting the call from the committee, Philip Powell, who has ministerial responsibility for electoral matters, opposed the commission's appearance. But PAAC Chairman Edmund Bartlett announced that he has received a ruling from the Clerk to the Houses of Parliament, Heather Cook, that the ECJ should appear. PAAC member Raymond Price said he was baffled as to why a public body would think it is above the process which good governance demands. That's it for the Parliament Report. So glad you joined us. Until next time, I'm Edmund Campbell saying walk good.